Hello, welcome to this tutorial on measuring cob angle. This can sometimes cause confusion and in this tutorial I will take you through the background to the cob angle and the logic of how you measure it. First of all, let's look at a simple example. Let's imagine that this is an AP X-ray of a spine and what you are seeing is scoliosis. Curvature at least on this image to the left of you. A way of describing this curvature would be to find this angle which is the Cobb's angle. To construct this Cobb's angle we draw a line along the superior border of the most placed cranial vertebra and along the inferior border of the most inferiorly displaced vertebra. This forms the Cobb or Cobb's angle. This is easy to do when the curvature is marked these lines converge in your paper or on the screen. What if this curvature is not so marked and your lines are extending beyond the paper? That's what we will see in the next slide. Let's look at this second example. Here the scoliosis is not so marked and these lines are more divergent and it's easy for these lines to go beyond the paper before they converge for you to measure the Cobb angle. Is there another way of measuring the Cobb angle rather than taking them to the uh, convergent point? This is what we will try to attempt in the next slide. In this slide I will explain to you another strategy for measuring the Cobb angle. To do that, once again, we draw these lines along the superior border of the most superiorly displaced vertebra and along the inferior border of the most inferiorly displaced vertebra. Then what we have to do is to draw a line that is perpendicular to this line. So that's 90 degrees. Same here, we draw another line that is perpendicular to this inferior line and then we look at this intersect and this angle that is marked red or gamma is equal to the Cobb angle alpha. This is the second strategy for measuring the Cobb angle. In the next slide I will explain how this gamma is equal to this alpha. So what we want to measure is the curvature of the spine which is the alpha. And since we drew these lines we have created a quadrilateral and we know the internal angles of the quadrilateral combined to be 360 degrees. And we also know this angle is 90, this angle is 90, so the alpha and beta has to make up the rest of the 180 degrees. We also, if you look at this line, this gamma and beta, they are on a straight line. So the beta plus gamma is 180 degrees as well. So if alpha and beta is 180 degrees and beta and gamma are 180 degrees, that will make the alpha, which is the Cobb angle that we want to know, be equal to this gamma. So this is how you would uh, measure the Cobb angle when the curvature is not so marked. The Cobb angle was initially devised to measure the deformity in the coronal plane as in scoliosis. However, nowadays 
the Cobb angle is also used to measure deformity in the sagittal plane as when there is a fracture and there is a deformity. Here the line, the superior line, is drawn along the superior end plate of the vertebra above and the inferior line is drawn along the inferior end plate of the vertebra below and then perpendicular lines are drawn to these superior and inferior lines and this angle that's formed is the Cobb angle that gives you the deformity. I hope this tutorial on Cobb angle and how to measure it and the geometrical background of it has been useful. Thank you very much and wishing you a good day.